Buddy, my name is Christopher Saunders, and this is a special edition of the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, the top performance of the week for the past week for high school football. And I'm pleased to have on an Xavier Talent. He's a senior. He's a running back. This past week, 272 yards and four touchdowns in a win against New Milford. And his head coach, Coach Andy Guion, said, hey, I've got a dude for you. Before you can even post, you know, for recommendations, here's a guy right here. You could stop looking. And I said, okay, I'm done looking. I don't even need to post it. So I'm pleased to have on DJ Wright. As I said, he's a senior. Uh, DJ, thanks so much for being able to come on, man. No problem. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm honored to have this opportunity, and I can't wait. You know, I think, you know, when I think of the Xavier program, and I've had Coach Guion on quite a bit, you know, he does a fantastic job. And, you know, for people who may not know, Xavier has produced a lot of talent as far as going to the next level for all sports. You know, the biggest one to, you know, people may know is playing on Saturdays is Will Levis or what Levis, Levis or Levis. He was originally Levis. at Penn State, Levis, thank you. He was at Penn State, transferred to Kentucky, and he's just lighting it up. When you see that man and you know that like, hey, he wore the same jersey, not the number, but the jersey I'm wearing, like that's got to be pretty cool, no? Yeah, I mean, that's like really the main reason why I came to Xavier like to just have that opportunity to you know follow all like the great athletes that played here and you know I knew Xavier would be a great opportunity like academically and athletically mm -hmm. for me and that really was a driving factor for going to Xavier rather than my public school. Now as you were coming through when you were growing up was football a was that like the first sport that attracted you? Were you an active kid growing up? How did sports kind of come into your life? Well, I've always, I think I played tackle football since like third grade. And even before that, I played flag. So football has really been my, my thing for a while. My dad played football and, mm -hmm. you know, it's just always been in my life. But I've also played um, basketball and baseball. I played baseball growing up the same, like, same time frame as football and basketball in middle school mm -hmm. and but it was just football football has always been my number one sport and sport I love the most and it's meant the most to me now when did you stop or have you stopped playing basketball and baseball or have you continued on playing that no once I came to Xavier I, I kind of saw that football was a really big commitment and I really wanted to put all my focus and all like my drive into football so I like stopped playing basketball and baseball to focus on football do you miss any of those sports man no i love football so much that i do not miss baseball or basketball not at all you know i bet you when uh when coach guiana will be watching this he'll be like yep that's my guy just football <laughs> just like me football morning yeah. noon and night every day and twice and you know days ending in y you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> now as far as to go back to the sports that you used to play now knowing the position, because you're, you know, I watched a lot of film on you. I know you were mentioned when I had Coach Guion on during the pandemic when the season was canceled, you know, in 2020. For people who are living under a rock and may not know, that last season was canceled. Um, and when I watched film on you, man, dynamic. I mean, I've, you know, you're not the, you know, you're not Derrick Henry, six foot five, built like a horse. But mm. the way that you run and your build, your strong, low center. You can really slide through the tackles, man. Do you think any of the sports that you played, either basketball or baseball, can attribute to what you're doing on the gridiron? Uh, maybe basketball a little bit, not really baseball. Baseball, I was I was a catcher, so I wasn't really moving around a lot. Mm -hmm. But maybe that contributed to my, my legs a little bit because I'm moving up and down, but I don't know. But basketball a little bit, but... I don't know, just putting in that work in the off season and, you know, hitting the weight room all the time is really what, you know, contributed to that stuff and watching film, of course. Now, because of you choosing just football going into your freshman year, did you notice a change from production on the field? Because I know when you're younger, you're probably, maybe you were, maybe you paid attention to what you did on the field. Maybe you didn't, I don't know. But when you focus strictly on football, did you notice that your production changed at all? I mean, did you know, or even your body? Because obviously when you're playing basketball, you're burning like 4,000 calories a game. Baseball, mm -hmm. it's also a little bit different movements. Like you said, you're a catcher. You know, you got to be careful with your knees because you're, 
you know, you're catching nine innings, seven innings, depending on, you know, what you're playing. You know, did you notice anything like that when you focused just strictly on football? I did get a lot stronger from the weight room, you know, going in the weight room every day and not having that, you know, to play or to practice for other sports. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from a sophomore year and then the pandemic and then senior year, I lost like 20 pounds, I think. So I got a lot slimmer and a lot faster. I remember my sophomore year, I wasn't as fast and nearly as fast, but this year I'm a lot faster. So that is really the main thing that really changed a lot. Now, during the, the lost season, and I know it was tough for everybody. I know a lot of people can, you know, they did it in one of two ways. Either they got better or they got worse. I mean, I remember my college baseball coach telling us every day in practice, it's either, you know, there's two things. Either you're getting older and better or you're getting worse and you're getting older, which kind of works in both ways. Um, do you feel like, or better yet, what did you do during the 2020 lost season? So obviously either in the weight room at home or whatever, what were you able to do to kind of keep yourself in football shape? Cause I can only imagine how difficult it was. I just, you know, always was in the weight room and I always was at the summer conditionings because, you know, when they were, the CIC was giving us the, Oh, you're going to have a season or oh, you're not going to have a season. We still had practices. So I always, I went to those all the time. I was always running around, always lifting weights, just mm -hmm. preparing for a season and then we were going to have one. But even during last year, the seven on seven season, I practice, still put in hundred percent and still lifted and never really lost a step. So, yeah. Now, as you were going through that and you guys knew that there wasn't going to be a season, but there was seven on seven. How did you and your team kind of push through that? Because I can only imagine how difficult it was after everything that went on during that time because of COVID. Then you had, like you said, you're playing, you're not playing. Oh, you're going to play. Oh, just kidding. No, you're not going to play at all. You're going to have seven on seven, which is de facto football. I mean, you could take it one way or another. How did you and your team push through that, but also see like, hey, there is light at the end of the tunnel. We can we can get as much as we can out of this and try to push forward as best as possible. So our team, we're a lot, we have a lot of seniors. So at the time we were all juniors and then, and you know, we were all like focused not to be selfish, but us on the class, as a class. Mm -hmm. So we all knew we, we were going to have one more season, whether it's going to be at least one more season, whether it's going to be, you know, the five game season and a regular season or no season and one season. So we like, we knew, you know, we're going to have one more season. We still have to put in the work. It's not like we can just, you know, slack off and be like, whatever, football's over. Mm -hmm. So we knew like, we still have to put in this work. You still have to, you know, grind to get a spot in the playoffs, which we're hoping to get this way with these last three games. So yeah, we just knew we still had a chance. Do you think it helped to that? because of the players that you knew were coming back, knowing that there was going to be a season at some point when the announcement was made late in spring, hey, there's going to be football and the schedules were coming out and everything like that. Um, do you think it helped because of the camaraderie that you guys had getting through that 2020? I mean, you were one of the few teams to my knowledge, and I'm just thinking of all the conferences. I mean, there's a lot in Connecticut where you, you know, you're returning back, not just your starting quarterback, but also you as well. And there's other pieces. I know there's a defensive lineman that you guys have who's nasty uh, to be able to return those pieces, man. Do you feel like that helped going into the off season and the summer and all that? Yeah. You know, we all like a lot of us played as sophomores, all seniors. So we all had experience. We all knew what it was like to play varsity football. Mm -hmm. It was just a matter of, you know, knocking off the rust and like, just like, Hey, it's football now. It's not seven on seven. Mm -hmm. so you know, we, we're all we're all close we're a close group we all like get along and yeah that's just what it comes down to now as you went into the season and you know your schedule man I mean it, it's it, it's tough I mean you played a very good Richfield team St. Joe's I mean your schedule by no means is one to where people can say oh well you guys didn't play anyway no you played against a lot of very good competition and also too something that was, I think, just starting this year as far as going outside your conference, playing teams from 
the ECC and so on and so forth, you know, going outside the FCAC as well. Do you feel like doing that helps because I understand the wins have not been there, but you guys seem like coming off a very good win against New Milford that going up against that competition can help better you going into the remainder of your schedule and trying to fight for a playoff spot. Yeah. I mean, it definitely helps better us because we know, you know, the good teams, it's not like we have these easy schedules, like a lot of the teams in the playoffs right now, they have pretty easy schedules and, you know, when they play a tough team, they're not going to know how to react. You know, we know how to play a tough team. I know it really hasn't showed too much, but we know what it's like to play a tough team and we know how to battle like Cheshire game. I know we were down 14 in the fourth quarter. We came back and won that Mm -hmm. and we know how to battle and going back to sophomore year prep game when we came back and won that and West Haven game, we came back and won that. We're just a team that will never give up and we're not going to give up the last three games of the season. We're going to give it all we got, no matter if um, we have a guaranteed spot in the playoffs or not, we're still going to give it all we got. You know, you have Notre Dame, you have Prep, you have Glastonbury, you know, all very good teams in their own right. But like when I think of, when I think of Xavier, and I'm not just saying this because I love Coach Guion, he's the man. But when I, think of, when I think of your team, man, and I think of a team that can make the playoffs and have success, consistent you know, success, and maybe even upset, you have the playmakers, like I mentioned, the defensive line, uh, the, the defensive lineman whose name is escaping me. I mentioned him when I had Coach Guy on here during the pandemic. He's fantastic. The way he gets off the ball, I mean, it's like two seconds, and he's already getting home to the quarterback. He, you know, yourself at the running back position. Drew Crone, who's a baseball star and has a very, very good talented quarterback. I don't have to say much about that. It's been proof is in the pudding. And then you have good complementary pieces as well on both sides of the ball. Do you guys feel like if you can finish strong and just take care of your business, that there's still an opportunity for maybe something special to happen as far as the playoffs, if you can get to that point? Yeah, definitely. Like we're all, you know, we're obviously all just set up. Like, you know, we got to win these last three games. You know, we have to do our own part and the pieces will fall in place. Like it'll happen. You know, we're just going to do our part and, well, we're going to do it. We're going to make the playoffs. And, man, you know, you've done your part. I mean, what you have done, and it still shocks me that, you know, there is no, like, you know, the offers. Like, I'm amazed that there has not been anybody coming to you, especially what you've been doing recently, but just, the you know, the work. And it's shocking to me. And hopefully this and, you know, there'll be other avenues to be able to show, like, hey, there's a player running back for Xavier. Pretty good. Go check him out, you know. But have you been able to kind of – sit back and just say like hey you know this is what I've done and like are you able to kind of appreciate that and say all the hard work that you put in even though it may not be showing in the offers just yet and I think that's going to change that at least what you're doing on the field is having the results maybe not in the wins just yet but you're getting the results as far as what you expect as an athlete and as a football player yeah I think that you know I really just leave that reflection time for the end of the season. You know, like every week after every game, you know, we celebrate after a win, you know, we uh, regroup after a loss, you know, and we move on, you know, Saturday morning and Friday nights are for like the, the, um, you know, the film, you watch a film and you see what you did and you know how to fix it. Mm -hmm. And that's really the only time I use to, you know, look back at it, but, Certainly when the season's over, I look more back at it. I'd be like, wow, you know, this is what I did. This is what we did. You know, we were a really good team. Hopefully we end up seven and three. We win these last three games and we make the playoffs. You know, it's definitely doable, man. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, I think of, you know, routines and kind of what helps prepare you. And this is, you know, just kind of popped up in my head because I saw that Mac Jones. And I don't know, are you a Patriots fan? No, unfortunately, I'm a Jets fan. So oh, I am so sorry to hear that. So sorry. So, and this is probably going to hurt a little bit, but Mac Jones said that before his, before he plays, what he has in the morning is steak and eggs. And I think pasta, very, very weird to have, but he said he did it in college and you know, the Bama and all that. I know coach Guion loves Bama, so can't really say much bad about them. All they do is win. Do you have any sort of routine that you do? Like, do you eat like an apple before you play a banana or do you do anything? Like do you make sure you go to bed? Like, 12 hours the night before. Is there anything in particular that you could share? No. Well, 
there's this new game out in the app store. It's called Retro Bowl. Okay. And it, uh, everyone on our team plays it. And it's kind of like a ritual to at the pregame, the, like the Thursday night meal as a team, like we're all playing it. So other than that, I mean, I don't really do anything. It's just, you know, school and game time. Right so after do, school's over. So you basically that, dominate you know, Retro Bowl. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Everyone on the team dominates Retro Bowl pregame. It's very, well, very addicting game. Now, what is it? Is it okay? Now, I'm probably showing my age, and I'm not that old, but it sounds like is it like Tetris? Is it like where you like what is that retro ball? It's kind of like I know, like it kind of like took over our school. So, and like a lot of people, a lot of kids played it during school. So there had to be a uh, a blockage of that website. So all the older teachers were comparing it to Tecmo Bowl or whatever. I think that's what it's called. But uh, it's kind of like a modernized techno bowl, per se. It's kind of interesting. You should play it sometime. I should I should play sometime. Yeah, it's very addicting. Are you trying to get me in trouble with my girlfriend? I'm already on my phone <laughs> enough with social media and all that. You're trying to are you trying to get me stuck on this even more? <laughs> <laughs> Just don't tell her. Maybe I'll go on in a little bit. Just yeah. don't tell her. But hey, man, it's great to be able to have you on. I mean you're a splendid young man and you know coach Guion definitely picked the right one as far as you know anybody on his team he could have picked would have been great but to have you on man is has been awesome uh, I do have one more question for you really quick uh I just want to go back to the uh you know recruitment side and again it's astounding that nobody is even coming to you and I hope that changes um does that does that motivate you that you're not getting the looks that you should be getting and that it's like, you know what? I just got to show up this week. If I don't get looks, then you know what? It, you know, basically, you just got to keep it going. Yeah, you know, on a personal level, it's definitely always in the back of my mind. But, you know, I just, at the end of the day, I just want to win. That's mm -hmm. all it really matters to me. I just want to win a game. But on a personal level, yeah, it does motivate me. But game time, I'm not thinking about, oh, if I do this, it's going to look on film. But mm -hmm. I just, I just want to win during the game. That's all I care about. Is there anybody on the Xavier team that you want to give a shout out to who could be watching this? Anybody in particular? Well, the entire O line for the performance they put out against New That's, Milford. That is very smart. As a running back, you got to make sure the big hogs are happy because they're protecting yeah. you. They're giving you those gaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They they had an amazing game and against New Milford. They, those holes they were making for me were huge. And it was really my success is their success. So it really goes out to them. And, um, you know, Timmy Conroy is a great player. Well, Max Matuza is a great player. Joe Barbagallo, a great player. Um, Drew, obviously, Drew. You know, the Gahuli brothers. Belzig, you know, there's a lot of players. Like, we're a lot of seniors. We're all boys. and mm -hmm. Just every one of them. Shout out to every one of them. You know, DJ, I wish you nothing but the best of luck for the final three games that you have. And, hopefully you guys have an opportunity to be able to compete in the state tournament. Cause I feel like if you guys get there, even though people may assume, Oh, you know, they, they couldn't beat the, the playoff teams, you know, the Richfields, the, you know, the St. Joe's and all that, but you guys could, I think you guys have the makings of surprising some teams. And I think that's the best to be the underdog and kind of show like, Hey, we're better than what you thought. And I think you guys can do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what we want. We want to be that team that just surprises people. It's always good to be the underdog. And, you know, we have that mentality. Well, let me know how things go the rest of the way, man. And, you know, I wish you nothing but the best of luck. And I wish Xavier, as far as the team itself, uh, best of luck through the remainder of the final three games that you have. Thank you. Thank you so that, much. That'll wrap things up in the Connecticut <laughs> Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. Mara CT stands for Connecticut Talent. And I'm Adrian to find them all. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody, and be well.